All right, Mr. Yassin, uh, but why is Mr. Obama keeping silent? I mean, he's not kept silent on several issues like Iraq, like Afghanistan, like Pakistan, and, and as you mentioned, like Mumbai. He's not, keeps, he's not kept silent on those issues. But why is he keeping silent on, uh, on, the, on the Gaza crisis? Well, I think the, uh, the Zionist lobby in Washington now has, uh, is very, very powerful. And I think the trapping, uh, the trapping Obama and Obama is not working freely. I don't think that Obama, uh, as uh, for example, from uh, the Islamic uh, origin, from Kenya, and he was brought up in, in Jakarta, I don't, th I don't think that he will work uh, as his, for example, uh, uh, human nature will uh, order him to work. I think he will be only just a follower of the, uh, what we say, the American uh, historical policy uh, uh, towards the Arab people. That he will not change now. He's, he's hidden now, and he knows, for example, that maybe one comment might, for example, endanger his, life, his political life. Uh, that's why I think he, he has a lot of accounts now in his mind that if he, for example, says, says that uh, those civilians, they are human beings, and Israel is, uh, uh, has a savage, uh, barbaric attack against those civilians, I think maybe one sentence by Obama uh, as what happened uh, to Hillary Clinton when she came with her husband and she said uh, this is a tragedy that uh, the Palestinian children they are living so the, uh, the, the, the Zionist uh, media in the West all of them they attacked uh, Hillary then she apologized for them and I think the same scenario might happen with the President Obama himself. All right, uh, Mr. Kathy in London we know that uh, Israel f was defeated by Hezbollah in Lebanon back in 2006. I hope you uh, do remember that. Uh, some say that Israel is trying to uh, restore its uh, so-called military invincibility by attacking Gaza with such a, a massive air raid and massive campaign. Well, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously some truth to that, and, and we do have the elections, of course, and uh, this is all favorable for, Indeed, but for at those what cost? Who, who can be... The who can be the toughest. Uh, I mean, that's part of it, but I, I don't really see that as, as, as the real agenda. I, I believe that this world is uh, effectively run by individuals who uh, maintain a grip on power through their minions and the corporations and the, the puppets who pose as heads of state. And ultimately, every policy that results in bitterness and hatred and further division of people, whether it be in regional context, or in a global context is a good thing. All of that works very well for those who make money off of war. We look at the military industrial complex, we look at Britain and America and Israel and their use of these weapons, the amount of money, the billions and billions that is made by producing these weapons, distributing these weapons, using these weapons, all of this is very good. So when you have angry, hateful, bitter, violent people who are going to lash out and you therefore justified in responding and, and we have this ongoing cycle of violence, this all works very well. The, the invasion and occupation of Iraq is not a mistake. Everything that's happened in Iraq with you know, some specifics not being quite played out as, as, uh, as it originally intended, basically everything has gone exactly how it was intended to go. You have this hatred in the region which will justify the military presence, the occupation, and the military uh, bases that are there, and you have the oil being taken and extracted from the land. These are all very predictable consequences, and I think it's important that people understand in the global scheme, the grand chessboard as it were, that all of these things work very well from the viewpoint of a madman, an insane person who wants to keep the masses uh, divided. There's no way for a tiny minority to rule over the masses unless they're divided. So in the bigger picture, this operation will be a success from that perspective. But I think that uh, Israel will have its nose bloodied. Uh, it will lose some of its people. And I hope more than anything else, that the world now finally treats Israel as it treated the apartheid regime in South Africa. This is what needs to happen. This is where we need to go from here. We need to have Nuremberg type tri tribunals. We need to be holding people accountable and we need war crimes and tri crimes against humanity trials being held in the immediate aftermath of this latest uh, travesty of justice and great humanitarian crime. This is the only way we can go, otherwise it's just going to be a continuation of the same old tired cycle and we can expect more of the same. Storing up problems for the future in terms of peace efforts and, of, in, uh, and in terms of, of course, uh, uh, arousing the anger and hatred uh, worldwide. <clears throat> well, uh, 
Well, I think now in the Arab world, in the streets of the Arab and Islamic world now, nobody could believe in the peace with Israel. Israel was built on terrorism and was built on violence and killing and uh, killing all the people, all the human uh, uh, Palestinian on, in their lands and I think there is no any kind of seeds of of optimism and peace in the horizon that uh, will show that the Arab people can make a peace with Israel. Israel's policy is just to evoke and to provoke the initiatives and plans and just uh, to leave on the crisis. Israel is doesn't want peace by the way. Israel wants wants to take, not to give. So how can this Zionist state will give peace for those Palestinians that they are, they consider themselves, uh, it consider them as very weak and have nothing to do uh, uh, with, uh, with its power. So they want, if they want a peace, they want a peace uh, uh, just with a weak partner like Mahmoud Abbas. They don't want anybody uh, can stand uh, in their face and just challenge them. I think from, uh, from the street, uh, from the streets of the Arab world and Islamic world, nobody can believe that these states uh, can uh, just demand peace. Because the Arab initiative now, that Saudi Arabia, uh, a couple of years now issued, Israel doesn't want peace. And at the time of their conference in Beirut, at that time, Israel was attacking Jenin and the other uh, parts of, of, Pal of Palestine. So this is, I think, the peace now process that Israel is uh, just now uh, repeating in the, what we say now, in international, for example, uh, community. This is a kind of nonsense. Israel doesn't want peace. Now, if it wants peace now, why this kind of blockade against one million and a half in Gaza Strip? How can Israel uh, wa uh, wants peace and it's killing the peace itself? So the peace is a hostage in the hands of the Israeli, uh, uh, what we say, uh, this, uh, this uh, kind of Zionist state. So we don't believe, as just a concern in Syria now, Israel doesn't want any kind of peace.